back. We're going to go through some committee stocks that are on the move here, and there's news around uh, JetBlue and Spirit, as you know. You own JetBlue. Yes. So no dice uh, on this deal, and JetBlue's been down a bunch. So what, what do we do here? So look at that. It's down almost yeah. 10%. I'm really surprised by that, to be honest. If we think back, we bought this before the Spirit deal was announced, and so this stock got hammered on the Spirit deal. Spirit deal ends. Stock was up 5% yesterday. Now it's down 9% today. You'd think you'd think if investors hated the Spirit deal and drove the share price down, they'd love that it was over. Maybe they're so, coming to like they're trying to ask themselves the question. Okay, if 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 the company needed to do a strategic right. of, of that magnitude and now it's off, it's right. kind of like okay, now what? And the question was, did they need to or did they want to? So when we bought it, our our thesis was that they would get back to two dollars of earnings. At this point, we think they can get back to one dollar of earnings. If it can get back to one dollar of earnings, it's trading at five dollars a share. But this is where, when you're down this much on an investment, like you really question yourself and go back and kind of start from ground zero. Wait, hold on. You you yeah. just took your own earnings expectation in half. Oh, we did that like a year but ago. But you took it in half. Yes. So how can you have the same view of this company and the stock? We don't. We don't. And so when we bought it initially, it was like fourteen dollars a share. That's when we thought it was going to get to two dollars a share of earnings. Put it ten times multiple on it. Thought it would get to twenty. Spirit deals announced. Everything goes haywire. Economy is distorted, and that that two dollars of earnings also is presuming that everything would go back to like really a normal pre-pandemic setup. Mm -hmm. So everything's changed, and I think I think you bring up a really good point, which highlights the challenge of how hard it's been to do valuation modeling work over the past four years. Wait, you, you bought this at fourteen dollars a share? Yes. Throw it back up, way guys, back, please. Way back. No, this is like a huge miss for us. This Why is are you still holding strategy. it? Because every time along the way that we've looked at it, we said, would you buy it here today? Yes. Do I think they can get to a dollar of earnings? Yes. If it's trading at $9 a share, that's nine times. Yes, I think we could still hold it. So we've adjusted and adjusted, but each time we've adjusted, our math has been wrong. Our expectations have been wrong. You get some wrong, right? We've used it as a, as a capital loss harvest and then bought it back, but we've just been wrong on it. And so you really, you really start to say, are, is your investment thesis on this sound? I'm not sure. You know, are we the, are we the crazy ones, or is everyone else the crazy ones? Um, but this is one inflection point. Some where, point the writing's on the chart about where this thing is, right? Okay, so but, you're looking at this. Hold on, but wait, I want to say. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You sound like, and and, and I appreciate how you're you're describing your positioning. Um, you sound as though you're a little bit stuck in the position. Would you guide? the viewers to buy the stock here? Not today because I'm a little bit wishy-washy on af like I'm very surprised by this move here and it unnerves me in a way that maybe that really makes me question my investment thesis. But if we go back to things like Intel where we've stuck it out and said okay, you know, move from 50 down to 26 and we're going back yeah, and we're Yeah, but I can tell you don't think this is Intel. I, I don't think it is. Right. I'm not sure, but it's like you do that along the way. You know, and you reassess what you think the earnings are and say am I right? You know, or am I the crazy one or is everyone else the crazy one? This this one, it's starting to feel more like, you know, like it's not going to get to that dollar that we need. I mean, but if it does, it's trading at five times earnings. That's so, pretty cheap. It's a tricky one. Let's it's go really to, hard. Let's go to another one um, that's gotten smoked. Alibaba. So Mizuho cuts the price target to 100 from 120. New 52-week low today. You own it and you initiated it. In, in August, so not that long ago. And there's been obviously questions about any sort of China related stocks yeah. for a variety of reasons regulatory, weakness in the economy, and Debt et cetera. Deflation, demographic headwinds. All right. Taxes. So why you own it? So, you know, when you when you look at China, it's the ultimate kind of contrary in play. We don't we don't love China, but Bob is an unappreciated quality grower at a, at a reasonable price. There's there's a turnaround story here, given the state of Chinese consumers. 70 percent, uh, there's a very high ownership, home ownership rate in China. And when home prices fall, you know, they, they, they tend to spend less. But this is a company that is beginning to reaccelerate. They have a dominant e-commerce market share, um, unappreciated cloud business, and mid-teens free cash flow, and it trades at seven times. Um, listen. It's something that's going to require a catalyst to turn around, but sentiment around everything related to China, and I think you want to zig on sentiment when everybody else is zagging. And this is a place where we think it rhymes with our medical at the end of last year. Some, sometimes the zaggers are right. We're zagging. <laughs> no, you said you're zigging. We're zigging. <laughs> We're zigging. zigging. We're going to see if the zig works. Right now, the Zags have the upper hand. <laughs> Morgan Stanley, okay, downgraded over uh, at J.P. Morgan.
target cut to 87. You wanted to do this. You just I do. Yeah. You for nudged the, me for on the it. Go ahead. Go ahead. On the next episode of Go Training ahead. Therapy with the Go judge, ahead. let's talk about Morgan <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> because I have to tell you, Morgan Stanley is a name that I owned for the better part of six years. You could say I was passively invested in Morgan Stanley. I saw the business from the outside. I interacted with them. I was really encouraged with what they did. Back in October, the momentum clearly broke down in this name, and I reacted to that and got out of the stock. Momentum presented itself once again. Momentum, nothing else. Presented itself once again in the fourth quarter, and I went back into the name. And I have to tell you, after this earnings report, I'm disappointed in myself that I did that because I really believe that probably was the wrong reaction to have. It was emotional in its nature. It was nothing more than a response to price. I should have just liquidated and sat on the sidelines. And I've also entered gold entered Goldman Sachs. I'm happy to be in Goldman Sachs. But Morgan Stanley's results this week are disappointing. That margin is not where it needs to be. I feel better. Okay, I'm glad you got it all out. Thank you. you feel, I'm glad you feel better. That was Good. Therapeutic. Yes. Um, okay. Now, last one to you, Jenny, because UBS is bearish on retail. One of the stocks which they don't like is one that you own. It's Kohl's, which they continue to rate a sell. So right. why do you continue to rate it a hold? So, um, I thought you were going to Disney. What a relief. No. Where do I go? Um, we go here. So in no small part, I continue to hold Kohl's because I think that each retailer is created quite differently. And this is just like, you look at their numbers, you look at their earnings, you look at the dividend, you look at the dividend coverage. It's an almost 8% yield. They're super committed to it. And they kind of just crank along. The thing that worries me on Kohl's more than any consumer weakness is actually um, this Biden administration thing where they're going to cut, where they're going to like put a cap on late fees because Kohl's actually makes a lot of money on late fees. So I think that's the bigger risk to the stock and that's what I'm watching really carefully. Things down is like 14% year to date. Oh yeah, but it also had a huge, this goes to the beginning of the show, it had a huge, huge run into year end. So it's just, you know, big moves. Um, but overall, it's a well-managed company. The cash flows are consistent. If you believe that the consumer holds up, like they're going to continue to spend here, I actually look at it as a little bit under the radar. I think I think the late fee thing is the bigger risk, right, and we're keeping an eye on it.